From News 19, I'm meteorologist Daniel Bonds. We are still tracking Hurricane Ian. Here's a tropical satellite loop of Ian. And one thing you'll notice if you follow the weather, follow hurricanes a lot, you'll notice this is not a very well defined hurricane at this point. And one thing you'll notice in these last couple of frames here, a lot of dry air moving into Ian. And then you also see some convection trying to develop. That's associated with the Gulf Stream there, but a lot of dry air is moving into this system. So that is certainly good news as it continues to move generally towards the north northeast, making its way for landfall. It looks like later this afternoon, somewhere along the South Carolina coast. Here's a radar loop over the last several hours. You can kind of see that convection there developing those thunderstorms, but notice that dry air still filtering in. That is certainly good news as far as the strength of the storm. It is not as strong as it could have been, especially with the tapping into that Gulf moisture. 56 degrees Columbia as of 8 o'clock, 57 in Orangeburg and Sumter. It is a cool, rainy and breezy end to our work week. And we're going to continue to see these rain showers associated with Ian move across the Midlands. So these outer rain bands will continue to impact our area. Closer look at the radar as of a little after 8 o'clock, you know, some heavy downpours moving through parts of the Midlands, and that's going to be the case as we push through the rest of your Friday. There'll be some heavy downpours, and we could see some flash flooding, obviously. The greatest risk for flash flooding is going to be in the eastern half of the Midlands. So if you live, we'll say, in Kershaw County, probably Lee County, Sumter County, Clarendon, uh, parts of Calhoun, Orangeburg, and eastward, Clarendon County as well, that's the greatest threat for it looks like heavy downpours and flash flooding. So that's what we'll be watching. But here's some of the particulars for Hurricane Ian, the eight o'clock advisory winds of 85 miles per hour, 105 miles south southeast of Charleston at this point, and it is moving towards the north right now. So that's a little bit of a change moving towards the north at about nine miles per hour. Here are here is the forecast for or at least the forecast track for Ian. Going to make landfall, it looks like, later this afternoon, somewhere along the South Carolina coast, and then quickly kind of move towards the north and northwest. Eventually, it's going to lose all its tropical characteristics, and as it moves towards the north, our weather will be improving, it looks like, later this evening and tonight. So here's a live look at the downtown Columbia area. Overcast skies, winds coming out of the north-northeast at 16 miles per hour, so 56 degrees. Winds coming out of the northeast at north northeast at 16 miles per hour. It feels a little bit cooler than that. Here's a live look at Edisto Beach. Certainly not a great beach day as our coastal region is under a hurricane warning for today. And we'll kind of go up the coast a little bit. Here's a live look at downtown Charleston. See those overcast conditions and Myrtle Beach might get the roughest weather. It looks like as Ian kind of tracks a little bit closer to the Grand Strand. So whenever you're on the right side or the, we'll say the northeast quadrant of a tropical system, that's typically the worst side of the storm. That's going to be the case with this one as well. But here is our in-house forecast model along with the track from the National Hurricane Center. And I believe our forecast models has handled this pretty well. So we'll go through time here basically every two hours. This is 10 o'clock. Those bands of rain continue to move into the Palmetto State, the Midlands and down towards the low country of South Carolina. Those bands continue to rotate in this afternoon and do expect a landfall at some point this afternoon. Hard to say exactly when and that'll happen, but at some point later today, maybe in Charleston County, Georgetown or Horry County, kind of in that range there. This is six o'clock, then eight o'clock. Notice the rain starts to decrease basically from south to north. And then as we get to about midnight or so, most of the rain is out of here. And it appears though Saturday should be fine. It'll be a bit breezy at times, mostly cloudy as Ian's going to be well to our north. A few more clouds may be possible on Sunday as well. Officially, all of the Midlands still under this tropical storm warning and the coastal region of South Carolina under hurricane warnings. So we're still under these warnings for today and there's still that storm surge warning for the coastal region of South Carolina. So with all that wind, it's going to continue to kind of push the water on shore over the next couple of hours or so or throughout the day, I should say. Here's a rainfall forecast. That's going one thing you probably, if you've been following this closely, there was indications that we could see anywhere from three to six inches of rain. I do think the highest amounts are going to be in the eastern half of the Midlands. And then certainly as you go into the PD over towards parts of the Grand Strand, 
This particular model indicating about two to three inches for the Midlands. And this is the American model kind of showing basically that same same range with some higher amounts again in the eastern half of the Midlands. Here is the European model. It's going about two to three inches as well with maybe higher amounts up towards Rock Hill and Charlotte. We're still under this excessive rainfall, at least a moderate risk for excessive rainfall. In particular, the eastern half of the Midlands, that will be the area that most prone to the flash flooding. So we'll have to watch for flash flooding. Not really expecting severe weather. We're going to be basically on the western side of the center of rotation. So the eastern side will be the area that we'll have to watch for possibility for severe weather. You get a lot of tornadoes sometimes with these landfalling systems, mainly in the northeast quadrant or the right hand side of the system. We still do expect the possibility for some tropical storm force winds. That will be the case again, especially in the eastern half of the Midlands because this track has been shifting a little bit more towards the east. The threat for stronger winds towards the west has been a little bit less. As we go through the day, talk about winds anywhere from about 35 to maybe up to 40 miles per hour, especially in the eastern half of the Midlands. But once what's left of Ian moves towards the north, especially by tomorrow, those winds will start to relax and our weather will be a little bit better as we look ahead towards the weekend. As far as the overall risk for tropical storm force winds, the risk is going to be highest in this purple area over towards Bishopville, Manning and places like that, maybe the eastern half of Kershaw County in this purple area. That's the highest risk for tropical storm force winds today. So that would be winds sustained 40 miles per hour or greater. Here's kind of another look at that, and that does include all of Sumter, Clarendon County, parts of Orangeburg, and then the farther west you go, the odds of tropical storm force winds decrease substantially. As far as the chance for hurricane force winds, pretty small. Um, it is going to be a hurricane when it makes landfall, it looks like later today, but the odds of having hurricane force winds here in the Midlands, pretty small at this point. We're talking about Ian, but we'll at least make a mention of the other system we're watching. This one coming off the African coast, but obviously Hurricane Ian is the big deal today. We've had 10 named storms. I should say nine named storms. I'm sorry. Typically at this point, we'd have 10 named storms, five hurricanes and two major hurricanes. We've had nine, four and two. So we're pretty close to what we typically would expect for an average hurricane season. Remember, Hurricane Ian was a major hurricane, a category four storm when it made landfall in Florida, but a different scenario now, a much weaker storm. We got that dry air moving in and it appears it will be probably a category one storm when it makes landfall later today, somewhere along the South Carolina coast. How does all this impact our weather? Well, it's going to be windy. It's going to be wet today, heavy downpours, maybe some flash flooding and possibility for tropical storm force winds, especially in the eastern half of our forecast area. Once the system lifts towards north, our weather does improve, mostly cloudy skies on Saturday. Going will keep things mostly cloudy on Sunday. We'll mention, make a small mention for an isolated shower, maybe a shower on Monday, a little cooler on Monday. But looking ahead towards next week, the weather does improve greatly. Low to mid 70s Tuesday and Wednesday, back up to about 78 degrees on Thursday. So we really have to get through today. It's going to be pretty rough today with the rain and wind. If you don't have to go out, I, I would just suggest staying indoors today if you don't have to go to work or anything like that. But heavy rainfall likely we will have to watch for that potential for some flash flooding. We'll also have to watch that potential for tropical storm force winds. Other than that, once we get through your Friday, the weather does improve. But of course, we'll continue to track Hurricane Ian and we'll bring you many, any updates as needed.